This segment of the news at them was first broadcast on the 23rd of August 2285. With the time in the Middle Ages coming up to 1536, Henry VIII has finally followed through on his threat to dissolve the monasteries. For the latest on this breaking story, we go over to our reporter, Kerry Murdoch. Up and coming young professionals, such as worm charmers and muck spreaders, have been flocking to built up areas such as these to get a good education for their children. Earlier, I spoke to Nora Fletcher, whose son, Pius, is at the Abbey. Pius is just starting a 30-year syllabus of Latin chanting and self-regulation, and if we thought there was any chance he wouldn't get to finish his education, we wouldn't have moved here in the first place. Do you know how difficult it is to find good schools in the Middle Ages? But do you call that a good school? They are still teaching creationism. There are always worries with faith schools, but look on the bright side. It's a great uniform, really easy to wash, and his handwriting has come on in leaps and bounds. The language teaching's top-notch, which is great for us, as he needs some Latin to be a vet. But what's the demand like for animal care in the Middle Ages? You'd be surprised. We've got him some work experience for next summer. He'll be based at a rare breeds charity who are trying to save some of our traditional animals from dying out. Did you know the English dragon has been hunted almost to extinction? We're trying to get dragon hunting banned. Obviously these knights of the realm aren't too pleased. But we think the animal's got a right to roam free. It's a British icon. But beyond parents, Henry VIII's plans to wind up the monasteries are not likely to draw much criticism. Many believe the monks have abused their position as, since the Romans left, they've been the sole suppliers of literacy. And several blunders in which messages went to the wrong recipients failed to help their reputation for accuracy. Now we have a new order, a rush job. This is to go out in the next three and a half years to all church stations in the southern diocese. The following text, Cardinal Wolsey was just a fat tranny in a red dress. No, it can't be wrong. Can't. I've got it right here in red on brown. Now get scribing. Earlier, I spoke to union representatives who feel management should have done more to head off the problems. It's clear that Henry VIII's just interested in asset stripping us. This isn't even a takeover. Most of my members are going to be thrown on the bidding heap. And it's all the fault of management. The services we offer, the chanting, the celibacy, the vaguely sinister air of silent menace, no one does it better than us. But no. They're just going to let us go down the privy, just so the king can get another shack. No, I don't think that's fair. No one knew that Henry VIII was going to try and dissolve the monasteries. We've been here for centuries. People love our shtick. And we're producing good, high-quality products. Our fortified wine gets you lashed quicker than anyone else's. You should see the export figures for Scotland. They're through the roof. But you were warned that Henry VIII was on the warpath. Oh, that's really not fair. We thought that was a hoax. OK, we did get a note, but it just said there was a fat ginger bloke who wanted to get divorced. I'd never even heard of divorce. I wish I'd known it was an option. Like a fool, I played it safe and opted for celibacy. Celibacy! And the idea that he didn't respect the absolute supreme authority of the Pope, I mean, as if! What kind of surname is the eighth anyway? Rubbish! And another well, thing. Were you not suspicious when the Earl of Essex turned up to catalogue your assets? He said he was from our insurers. Henry's programme of dissolving the monasteries begins later this month, with a focus on nicking all the gold and pimping his carriage. But royal watchers say it's just a short term blip and he'll soon calm down. Henry's young! You can expect this kind of exuberance from him. No, I think this will blow over very quickly. Now Henry's found his perfect love in the shape of Anne Boleyn, I think you can expect a fairy tale wedding and a long, long happy marriage. I don't think I'm sticking my neck out too far to say two wives will be more than enough for Henry. 
And we've just heard that Henry VIII is promising to reinvest all the money generated from the dissolution of the monasteries and abolish all taxation. Coming up in the next half hour. Did this really happen? And if so, where were social services?